in this video we will discuss about the gate importance of gate and so on and how about the react native project how we can publish our react native project as a git repository so it's a combination of gate and react native so let's see that what kind of contents will be discussed in this video so we will discuss about what is git why git is important and how actually git works which means that what kind of basic commands are there in git how we can actually install and launch git bash which is a, a command line tool for uh, having or running your git commands we will be comparing expo cli and the react native cli projects uh, with aspect of uh, git and what kind of options are already available and how we can actually create our remote uh, git repository and how we can actually push and publish our expo cli and react native cli code on our remote git repository we will also discuss that how we can use the software which can visually show you the git repository and all the code that you push and all the basic features of that source free software which is actually used for the git so let's dive into it and see that how we can achieve and how we can do all these so let's talk about what is git git is a distributed version control system for tracking changes in source code during software development so it is very much used by the software developers and uh, they control different versions of their software during the development development of a product development of a small piece of code even whenever they do changes they actually uh, control its versions so before git actually there were version controls but they were not actually distributed normally companies used to host their own version control softwares on their local machines or local servers uh, within the premises of their uh, software development house and it was not distributed it was not directly accessible from outside the premises so git actually is something that you can access from anywhere anywhere in the world uh, from any place you need to have an internet connection and then you can actually uh, contribute remotely on uh, on the development process of uh, your team and you can actually work together and you can save your code you can keep track of the changes and so on so that that's all about the git well we have seen that what is git and uh, but the question is that why we need git why cannot we work without git why do we need to learn git what's so important in git as a software development as a professional as a fresh graduate even as a student so let's uh, talk about how git can help you as a student so there are many advantages uh, for being a student and having and working with git is that as a student let's say for example you are working on different assignments working on your uh, personal tasks and personal projects yeah maybe you are learning some new technologies and how git can help you so actually when you are working on some assignment or task you might or most of the time you work in in incremental order so you perform the task one the very basic task and then you move on to the task two and then you do the improvements and then later on you are doing some finishing in that so normally you keep different versions locally on your uh, on your uh, own machine you are just making different copies so that when you are going to change the code and modify the code uh, you want to keep yourself a bit safe that the new changes should not disturb or uh, interrupts the functionality which you already developed so you normally what you do is you keep different copies so you copy the entire directory and then you paste that directory and then you say that this is version 1 this is 2 and this is 
and if you are stuck in somewhere in your code and you want to ask your instructor and maybe your fellow that I'm stuck over here so you need to carry your laptop and you need to wait for him to come and see physically that what's wrong in your code and maybe you are doing something wrong you cannot share that code or you need to send that code through email through different other communication software uh, different channels and so on <coughs> so uh, if you are using git and you are whenever you are doing changes and you are bringing new changes in uh, the current project or or your assignment so you just need to write your code once you see that it's done and it's fixed and you have implemented new features in that you can actually push your code online on your git repository and similarly if you think that the new changes has disturbed the previous version so anytime you can actually check out the previous version and you can move back on the previous version and you can do the changes it can also happen that the recently pulled uh, code from the gate you have done some changes and everything went wrong so how and you don't remember that how can I change or bring that change I don't know what kind of changes I have done it's the easiest way is that you just reset all the changes that you have done since you actually pulled your or since you last committed your repository so I'm actually using the git terms over here but you don't need to worry about I will explain in practical examples being a fresh graduate git can help you uh, there are more chances for hiring in uh, nice companies because you can actually showcase the quality of work, the type of work, the amount of work and the type of standards you are using while developing your code and how complex you can uh, develop the code in any technologies. So you cannot represent that through your CV but you can represent that through your GET. That if, for example you have developed a kind of information system, you have developed an uh, AI project but how complex was that how good code you wrote uh, companies want to see that so for this you actually represent your code your project through git repositories so you can showcase you can add a link of your uh, git repositories or your Git profile in your CV and so that companies can navigate into your git profile and then they can see that what kind of and the quality of work you do and how much you are knowledgeable and what kind of uh, advanced language constructs you are actually implementing while developing your code. Being a professional developer uh, in any company or even individually you definitely need git and you need advanced git uh, features as well let's say for example you want to work in branches and then you want to keep different branches and then you want to later merge those branches you want to learn that how I can push my code uh, without uh, doing extra uh, work for publishing and so on you can configure CICD pipelines and you can do DevOps kind of thing and then you can actually whenever you do changes in your code and it's testing and it's ready to go and merge with the with the master branch and, and the live server you can actually do that many things uh, with your code and it will be published automatically and you don't need to do anything extra being a team lead in any software company you need to see that how your team is working how much amount of work they have done and how they actually fix a specific bug the quality of code they are writing you can actually monitor all these things sitting at home sitting at your own PC because everything is live on a git repository you can pull that you can run on your machines you can do a lot of things so that's why you we need git in this modern technology and then this modern world we really need to do that and you see that many open source softwares and many big companies actually are working on git and they are putting everything on git so the source codes are available 
and you can actually get that source code people are actually contributing we are not going so far in the contribution thing and so on but in this uh, we will actually look for the very basic uh, command so that we can at least work with the git on our personal projects so let's see how git actually works so being an individual developer uh, you are not contributing uh, that's fine you actually keep different versions of your code on git that is fine but let's see if you are actually working together uh, in the team let's say for example you are doing as a student you are doing a project with your partner and you want to work together on the same code and so on and if you are working in a team uh, in, a, uh, in a in a project in a software development company then you also need to work in collaboration so some piece of code you are writing some piece of code is written by others and then you share the code so the thing is that you have a local repository uh, and uh, you have different files in that repository and you actually push your code on a remote repository so other partner uh, or your team member can pull that code on your machine and do some changes in that code and then you can actually push back that changes to the local remote repository so before starting working on the new features and the version they can actually see that what kind of changes are made by which partner or the uh, team member they can actually pull that piece of code or the version of the the project and they can actually work on that and then they can actually push that back again so the latest version is always available you can pull that it's not necessary when you pull that you do the changes you can wait for the new version as well so you actually uh, whenever you do the changes you want to publish that change online uh, using uh, git on a git server so maybe uh, you are doing push you are doing changes and then you are pushing then you are doing some changes and you are pushing and this person is just putting and see the words new things are coming maybe this person can be uh, a team lead and this is the developer so he is just he is not writing code but he is actually pulling the latest changes and maybe pub publishing that code uh, if it's a website publishing that code from here to any other web, web server but this is a developer who is actually doing the changes and pushing the code and you are actually keeping that the copy of the code over here you have a copy over here and you have a copy over here so that's how actually git works and that's how you do that for a personal projects you actually push that push that push that but somehow let's say for example your local repository is lost uh, you have bought new uh, new laptop and uh, all your uh, uh, code is gone uh, or maybe your hard drive crashed so everything is gone you don't need to worry about you just uh, need to log in into your git uh, account and you can pull your entire uh, code and even all the changes that you have done you can do that and you can continue working from the uh, uh, project where you left or in other words when you last pushed your code so that's how actually git works another look of uh, git is with some git command is that you have a working directory so you have initialized your directory as a git repository so you can actually when you are working you have done some changes you add those changes to the staging area so this is called a staging area because whenever you do the changes in your code you add some new file or even in existing file you do some changes you add some code or even you remove some code so you actually tell through the git command that i want to add this into the staging area and i want to like i'm done with this feature and I want to actually commit that change and say that this is the point that everything is working fine. 
so you do commit git commit with a message that uh, i have added a menu bar let's say for example and it's working or maybe i have added a menu bar which is just a design and it's not functioning and uh, you can actually do the commit so uh, until here you can actually do and repeat that step so you can actually add some more features like menu bar with the functionality you add that and then you commit that with the message that menu bar is functional but you have not published your code on online on a remote git repository so for this you need to push your code and when you push your code it is actually pushed on your remote git repository and will become available just like this so if you are working locally uh, locally uh, pushing your code uh, locally committing your code it will be locally available with different versions but it will not be available online for others until and unless you push your code so this is the last thing that normally you do is the pushing but before that you repeat uh, normally you repeat these steps you add uh, and you commit you add you commit and you push these are the three very common steps that you are doing every day when you are working with the git So pushing your code, creating a repository, publishing that repository, committing your uh, code, adding files, these are some common git commands which are used every day. To initialize your git repository which is actually local and uh, that repository or that specific project is not a part of git. So you can use that git init command and with the help of git init command you actually initialize that project or that uh, project directly as a git repository or git repo. So repo is a short term normally used for the repository. So you initialize local git repo with the git init if it's already not a git repo. Right? You add files so whenever you do changes you do this command you run this command git add git add space dot actually add all the files which are actually you want those files to be part of this uh, git repository and you want to push that with the help of git status actually you can check the status of your current uh, git repo uh, which files has been added in that and uh, what are the names of the files which are not in track so you actually check the status of working tree in other words so you see that uh, uh, what's being changed and what's happening uh, currently in my project so with the git commit you actually commit changes with a message that whenever you do the changes there is a message that what kind of version what kind of uh, features has been introduced so it's a string message so you commit so all these uh, four things you do locally you uh, first time you do git in it you don't do this every time so once your project is a git uh, repo you don't need to do this Normally you perform git status just to see that what's uh, in the working tree but normally you do git add, you do git commit and once you are done you have committed the code and you can actually push your code to the remote repo. So definitely to do that you need to tell that where is the repo and what's the path of that repo definitely if you are using github or even bitbucket it will ask for the for the uh, for the credentials so that they can authenticate because uh, just providing a git url mm, others cannot push it will authenticate you so that's how actually you do that and these are very basic git commands that are normally or commonly used and these are the very basics so once you are done with the basics you can go into the advanced level on your own and you can explore some more git commands and these are actually helpful normally git is available by default in mac and uh, in linux 
but uh, Git is not directly available on Windows machines. Uh, maybe Microsoft will introduce Git uh, later on in later versions uh, of Windows. So it will be available uh, by default because Git is getting very essential for uh, uh, all the developers now. So you can actually navigate to the git for windows.org and then you can actually download. It will actually download the git bash. But before doing that, you, you, you actually need to know and you need to check that if the git is installed over there. If you are working with React Native, so uh, React Native is by default is, is a git and when you do the all the installation of uh, React Native CLI or Expo CLI, it actually requires git. So in that installation, you might have already installed Git, but you can check the version of Git if Git is available through this uh, easy command. So you git double dash version and you see that if it's available, if it's not available, you can actually go and install uh, Git for windows.org and you can install the, the Git. You can navigate over here and you can see that there are some other tools are available in um, that. So once you have installed uh, git bash and it's available, you can search uh, in the start menu and uh, it is recommended to launch git bash as an administrator uh, if you are working on uh, crucial or the system drives like C drive. So uh, for writing and doing git operation, uh, it might uh, need to have administrator rights. But before doing that, you can open any project or any folder you just right click over here and then you see the git bash here so git bash here will actually launch the git command by default over here at this uh, inside this directory so when you open the git bash you see uh, this kind of bash uh, over here that linux uh, style bash and you can uh, write basic uh, commands so actually it supports Linux and um, the Windows uh, commands and some commands are actually not as we have in um, Windows based uh, command line um, so uh, there these are some commands which are actually not available some commands are common some commands are uh, available which are actually in Linux and also in Windows so that's how actually you work with the command line with the bash so uh, that's all so you once you have launched uh, git bash and everything is working fine it means you are good to go so once git is installed on your machine and it's working you can run git bash uh, let's see that how uh, we see the different git commands so for Expo CLI project, Expo CLI project is by default is a git initialized repo, which means that if you see the status through the git status command, uh, you see that the list of files which are actually untracked files, which means that I need to perform git add to add those files to a working tree. So that git will be tracking those files. And will be tracking the changes and I can commit that file and I can actually push that file but the thing is at this point that you need to see that the Ex Expo CLI project is a git repo by default you don't need to initialize the repository so this is a git folder over here which is actually a hidden folder so you can actually unhide and see and this, this there is a file of git ignore which is, which is having a list of uh, those folders and files which should not be tracked by git uh, when you are actually uh, doing any changes such as node mod modules will not be tracked because git is essentially and mainly used for tracking your source code which is actually the simple text and not the modules so and if you talk about react native cli based project uh, by default it's not a git initialized which means it is not a git repo by default although it has a git ignore which has a list of uh, files which should be ignored when you are uh, uh, pushing your code online on the git repo 
and making changes and the committing so if I <coughs> inside this react native CLI project uh, I if I type in git status uh, it's not a git repo what do I need to do now that's a question I need to say I need to type git init to initialize this directory as a git repo so let's do this so first we look at our uh, expo CLI project and you see a git directory over here and the git ignore I can actually use git bash here or I can even uh, open my VS code and I can run those commands from there as well so if those commands are not available you can directly go into the git bash so I will open and launch this uh, project in VS code and I will use the terminal of VS code and perform different commands so I will just close that and you can see in VS code we have this option and it is uh, telling me that these are some untracked files so U stands for uh, these are untracked so actually I can run git status over here and it's telling me that uh, these are the files which are actually untracked so what do I need to do is I can say that git add all by putting a dot so it's automatically ignoring all the node modules directory and uh, all those files which should not be pushed as a git repo so it's actually inside git ignore so now if I check the status so if I clear that and if I check the status so now you see that it's in the green and uh, I have not committed anything and uh, uh, these are the changes that need to be committed <coughs> so I will add git commit m as a message first basic project with or I can say that I have added event handler added so this is the commit so if I go and see git status so it's saying that I am on master but uh, there is nothing to commit and working tree is clean uh, but thing is that uh, uh, I don't have anything over here but these are the files which are uh, part of git and these are actually I have not made any changes in that so if let's say for example if I go over here and if I do any change over here like this so you see that this is the chain that I'm making over here right so VS code is actually highlighting that change like this okay. all right so if I let say for example I do that change so if I save that change so you see that this has been modified and there is something that has been changed so I can go back into terminal and if I check the status over here so it says that it's been modified okay so what do I need to do is I need to say that get add git status so it's part of uh, git then git command so these are the commands that actually you repeat so alert has been updated so you have a git status over here you see that it's gone it's not no more over there and I'm on branch master and nothing to commit so what do I do now 
because I am just working locally on my machine and I am not change anything. So let's create a git repository and then push everything that you have locally committed online. So I can go to my github account. So when I am talking about git it's not necessary that I am talking about only github. Git is just a version control. So I can go to even Bitbucket. So Bitbucket is also one of the uh, very famous Atlassian product which is actually uh, Bitbucket is one of the product of uh, Atlassian and then it also, also uses for the uh, managing your Git repositories and having some advanced tools such as build and you can do the deployment and so on. So GitHub is not the only thing. So let's create uh, a repository after login I can create a repository and I can tell the repository name let's say expo CLI CLI project and it's saying that it's available and I can also specify any other thing so it actually support uh, the dashes and if I don't add it supports the space and will automatically add a dash over there so it's just about how you name it so expo CLI project for the demonstration I can choose either public or private depending upon if I uh, want this uh, repository available for everybody or I can uh, create a private repository I can choose that which person can see that who can contribute in that pr uh, private repository before GitHub was not offering private repositories and but Bitbucket was offering but now GitHub is offering few uh, private repositories you can create that and you can create smaller team in that otherwise you have to pay and then you move on so if you think that you don't want anyone to see you can create a private repository and uh, it will not be available so let's create a public repository in this I can have uh, and I can add a readme file so that I can put a uh, nice information that uh, what is this repository about and so on like uh, I did with others let's say for example I just want to show you let's say for example this is uh, C sharp code and this is my repository and this is the readme file of this and having some more uh, information about the repository that if somebody pulls that and how they can use it what kind of features has been implemented in that so you can actually create you can later on create that it's not necessary that you create right away uh, I don't need to add git ignore because git ignore is already available over here right and uh, it can create a git ignore by itself depending upon what kind of technology you are working on and what kind of source code is going to be pushed on this repository I don't need to add a license if I want to add some specific license and I know that why I'm adding this so these are some the some of the license so it's not licensed so I just create a repository so when I create a repository it actually uh, gives me some uh, quick setup information that you can use this URL and then you can use SSH and uh, uh, it also telling me that I need to initialize the repository I can add these commands and I can actually commit the first commit and then, then I can remove so we have actually done these things although we have not done this um, readme but we can do that but our uh, repository is initialized and we have committed and we have did some change now we need to add a remote uh, to this repository so this is the URL that I need to add as a remote um, I can have several remotes for uh, a single repository but in this case I will add this uh, remote uh, to this repository so remote has been added 
and uh, now I can push so when I push I need to sign in if I'm already not signed in so I can push this repository uh, uh, this uh, empty rep created repository so my local repository is going to push on this remote so it's uploading and it's giving me this the status and uh, I'm done so I can actually refresh that repository and you see that alert has been added I can see there there are two commits so the first commit was event handler added which was very first commit and uh, this is uh, the commit that we just made so I am inside these commits I can actually click on this and I can go back and see my repository and you see there are there there is no known modules folder there is no extra folder just the source code and uh, I can actually go back anywhere anytime whenever I see that what kind of code has been written over here at this stage so if you remember that uh, it had a message over here so this file was added in this point and uh, in this point I can go and see that I actually removed this and actually added this so actually you can see uh, over here as well and if I want to share at this point so actually I can commit and go and see the commit let's say for example at this stage and I can actually browse files and actually I can clone or download from this All right. So our repositories we can actually uh, anytime download this repository uh, this source code will be downloaded and will be available or we can actually clone this repository we can use this uh, URL to clone this and with the cloning I can see all the changes they have done and so on. So let's add our react native CLI project on our github account. So this is our react native CLI project which is actually not a good repository right now which means that if I do any changes it will not track anything. So this is our project and uh, these are the files although it has a git ignore which is a good thing I can open a terminal and if I say git status it's not a git repository which means I need to initialize it as a git repository so git init will initialize it as a git repository and you see that there are several files which are actually untracked so I can check with the git status so these are the files which are actually untracked so what do I need to do next so how do I add untracked files we can do add and all the files I want to add if I want to add a specific file or specific uh, file with an extension let's suppose there were all JS files so I can do add static.js or specific file name and if I check get status now so these are the files which are actually added and they are ready so these are actually the files which are added in the index so I can after the add I can do git commit and initial rncli project so it will commit that and after that in the git status I have nothing to commit and one commit is ready but it's not pushed so if I create another repository for the react native CLI demo project and again I just uh, don't need to create that I just create a repository 
so it's telling me that I need to get initialize we have already done we have done single one commit but I need to add this remote over here so let's add a remote it's added and now I need to get push origin master so it's pushing done a refresh here we go so this is our initial reagent CLI project and this is only one commit and you see all the files source code is over here and uh, we don't need to do anything else and node modules is not there and uh, now it will be tracking all the changes that I am doing over here let's say for example let's do a single change over here so let's add message I save this and uh, it says that it's modified I need to do is I need to get add this and I need to do get commit m alert has been updated and now I need to just get push so this time I actually uh, did the changes I pushed the code I did the changes I committed I pushed the code so I have done this uh, uh, in that way so I can just refresh that and I see there are two commits and uh, that's that's a new code that I I modified and I can open app.js and I can see that this is the new code it's available online and I can share the repository link uh, from anyone like this and then I can actually add a contributor as well and there are some more advanced things such as branches and so on it's always good that we can see the things visually and uh, they are more uh, meaningful and more attractive so this is one of the example and I'm using a source free software and source free software is available and uh, you can uh, install that you can download that and this is a source free software source free software, software can help you to visualize and see your uh, uh, git repositories and uh, you can manage from here and you can see that what kind of commits are there what kind of changes has been done in the commits so this is one of the project i have opened and which is uh, recently uh, pushed and it can s tell you that what kind of branch you are working and these are the branches i'm on and i can actually switch the branches I can delete the branch I can create a new branch and I can merge and so on these kind of operation that we have been doing through the command line we can do that from here so let's add our react native project from here so when I open a new tab I have several options over here either I am I want to open a local repository or I want to open a remote repository for remote repository I need to sign in I need to add an account and I can do that I can clone the repository which is uh, remote repository available and uh, for this I can see the changes I can add my local folder or I can actually initialize a repository from here so let's add a local so I will just uh, copy this react native CLI project path and I will select this folder and I will add this so when I add this you see the branches branches master so this was our initial react native CLI project and you can see that what kind of changes has been, has been done in that and this was our the latest one and our head is over here so head is something that is that you are actually currently over here in this situation in your code so it is uh, an app.js file and it was removed and this one 
this code was added over here so you can visually see that uh, uh, how things can work from here so let's say for example if I add something from here inside this let's say for example I add another text and I actually modify this welcome to and if I save so if I save this file and you see that this file is modified and you can see that it's refreshing and saying that there are um, some uncommitted changes so I can actually do that changes from here this is unstaged file so I can actually stage that file and it's visually showing me that this has been added in this so I can actually stage all or even stage selected files so this is the file that has been stage I can unstage that and um, so on I can do that so I can actually push that and uh, before pushing definitely I need to tell the branch and I need to provide the commit message which I actually not provided that so you see that the head is still over there and nothing has been committed over here so I can actually commit that and I can say that a new heading has been added so I commit and it's ready to push so it's locally committed and you can see that one push or the one change has been done so I'm actually my head is over here and this is the latest code I have over here and uh, you can see that I can push so I need to push So you see that the head is over here and uh, I'm uh, over here right now at this stage so I can go and see that my react native CLI demo project and you see that there are three commits and a new heading has been added so you can also work with the source tree and uh, uh, it's a nice tool I really like it and uh, you can do uh, a lot of things like this and so on you can also clone the uh, repository which is actually a remote repository available and let's say for example if I want to share that uh, repository with someone so let's let's go to our react native expo <coughs> this is our expo CLI project and this is a public repository and I want to give this to someone and uh, I want to say that this is a repository that I want to add or uh, I want to give you this repository or even you can have a, a repository anywhere so you can actually choose that way it's going to download so this is in the documents and let's keep it over there so I just want to clone this one so this repository which is actually live may be uh, developed by someone and I want to see and retrieve that so you see that all the commits that were made on that repository are actually available over here and I can see and the, I can see that the head is over here so if I have uh, rights as a contributor I can actually make changes and I can push that repository but by default rights are not available so you can actually use uh, source tree software and you can clone any repository remote repository on that so downloading that uh, will be actually will download the source code but we have not uh, we don't have a list of these commits and uh, but over here we have a list of all the commits which are made and I am actually over here 
so that's all about the software that we can use and we can visually see that how things are happening and these are the very basics and there are some advanced features as well available that you can explore on your own so these are the very basic things that we have learned about git about uh, our react native project that how we can push and publish our react native project how we can create a git repository if it's already not a git repo uh, this knowledge can be applied in any project it's not very specific and very much related to the react native projects only because we are actually going through the react native course so actually i preferred and focus on the react native project but this git uh, tutorial that i have gone through that can be applied on any type of project it can be a dotnet project it can be a java based project python project it can be a very basic node.js project can be a react.js project angular anything you name it and you can actually work with it so git and uh, all the basic git commands and uh, for an individual and very basic things so people are very normally re reluctant to use git and they are actually kind of afraid of using git because of maybe very complex structure and difficult commands and they don't know which command to use and when to use so we actually covered all these basic commands that can be used in everyday life for uh, an individual developer and you can use and explore more commands to do some more things some advanced things such as branching such as some other uh, uh, features such as forking and adding a contributor in your code and they can actually contribute and you can work as a team you can explore more features of git on your own and you can see that you can develop and create your each project as a git repository and it is recommended that whenever you write a piece of code and whenever you create a project you work on you actually create a git repo you publish that git repo and then you actually keep track changes of these uh, uh, git repository and then you actually work on this and it's very good and easy to share your code with others and others can see that what kind of work you are doing and it's an open world and people are actually sharing things sharing their source code helping others so it is recommended that you also do that we also discuss about the software the source tree i really like their software and it's easy to use and it has a visually visual tree that actually you can see that what kind of commits you have done you can quickly see that what kind of uh, code was changed in that what which files were newly introduced what kind of change has been made in those files and it's a very nice software and you can actually use that software you can clone the repositories you can add remotes and you can do a lot of things uh, with the sorcery software so that's all about the very basics of git and uh, publishing and creating our react native project and pushing code online on our git repository